hope you enjoy what we've put together. We're going to have some panelists up here. Uh, Mr. Hogsett's going to come up and be the mediator. But what we want to have this happen is we want to have this go viral. So I'm going to do something that they tell you not to do in theaters. Take your phone out, please, if you have one. She's got one, guys. Come on. All right. So we've got a hashtag. For those like me that's not 100% sure what that is, that's a way of tagging things in social media. So pick your favorite social media, whatever it is. Facebook, Twitter, Skype. I'm not sure what that is, but fine. That's what we're going to call it, okay? So take your phone out, and I want you to type something for me. All right? So put your... <laughs> buffering, buffering, buffering. I am. I am. Thank you. All right. So, let's get your glasses. All right. We're good. Hashtag, for those like me that don't know what that is, that pound sign on the old phone there? Or if you really don't know, it's the tic-tac-toe thing? Okay. Hit that for me. Capital C, O, M, P, L, E, T, E, capital I, N, D, Y, capital K, capital S. We should have that one down by now. And that's our hashtag. Hashtag complete indie KC. KS, thank you. <laughs> We're in Kansas, right? All right. <laughs> thank you all for your patience. We do appreciate that. And like I said, we really would like you all to take photos as you wish. Um, at the end of the session, we will have a brief period for you to ask questions if you would like. Um, again, that depends on how late we end up going tonight. We've got to get uh, the kids home, you know. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce our, city com our infamous city commissioner. I, I knew I was going to do that to you. Gary Hogsett. You can applaud for him. I was joking. He's not. And our lovely panelists, which Gary will introduce much better than I did. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming tonight. As our panelists uh, find their seats, I, I will let you know I'm not a member of the Young Professionals. It's not because I haven't tried to join several times. I don't know, I don't know what the giveaway is exactly, but they say I'm, I'm not close enough to 40-ish, being 60-ish. I am way younger than Jerry Bright, though. I will say that right up front. So, I'd like to start off by asking each of the panelists to introduce themselves. And uh, what I'd like you to do is give your name, your occupation, and then tell us whether you were born in Independence, and if not, how long you've been here. Can we just start down on the far end and work our way across? Hi, uh, Brett Kelly. I'm originally from Independence, moved away, came home and started a business. Um, I am an owner of a business downtown called Kelly Spine and Sport. It's a chiropractic clinic. My name is Ashley Newland. I was born and raised in Neotache, Kansas. Um, moved away to Wichita for a few years, came back, and I've been working in, Wichita, in Independence since 08, uh, but just recently moved over here this summer. Um, and I'm a CPA and partner for Yerkes and Michelle's. My name is Brittany Thornton. I'm the Director of Admissions at Independence Community College. I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri, and we've been here about seven years. And I'm Shelby Demo. I'm originally from Cherryville, Kansas. I was raised there, went to school at Pittsburgh State University, and then came back to Independence to raise my family. And I currently work at Grassroots Design Group as a graphic designer. Hi, I'm Trevor Bruning, um, owner, part owner of Mega Excavating and Trucking, and also a rancher here. Uh, been here since I was born, never left or anything. I'm Jocelyn Kuziak. I am uh, the owner and lawyer at Kelly and Kuziak Law Office, LLC. I moved here when I was 12 and then graduated from high school, moved away for nine years, and I recently moved back. Hello, my name is Derek Reyes. Uh, I'm a cost accountant in Powerfly, at Powerfly Mink, which is in Parsons, Kansas. I've lived here since I was seven years old. I'm Brett Burskins. I was born and raised in Independence and recently moved back and 
I'm a sales representative for Hugo's Industrial Supply. Tim Haynes, I'm lab manager at Fab Lab ICC on beautiful Independence Community College campus. Um, I uh, would say that I married into this community. Um, I grew up in Lawrence, Kansas, but my wife was pretty much born and raised here, and uh, we met in college and have lived here since 2013. All right. Thanks, everyone. Now, I'm just going to review. Some of this has already been covered, but just a, a few. This is just raise your hands and let me know again. So who left here for college and has returned after college? Just show me your hands. Okay. So a few of those. And then uh, those that left and returned, who worked elsewhere for a while? Okay, seem to have a consensus there, all right. And did anyone move to independence because they had a great job opportunity here? Okay, great, thank you. And we already heard a couple of your business owners, I think, Brett, and um, so we've got two business owners, three? Yeah, three business owners, thank you. And how many of you have, four, sorry. <laughs> Can't see you back there. And how many have kids, children? All right, wonderful. Wow, we're repopulating independence in a hurry. Um, and who here does not have family close? Anybody? Just one. Okay, thanks. Um, also, since, since living in independence, has, have you been offered job opportunities elsewhere that you declined because you preferred to stay in independence? Okay, several of those. Fantastic. All right, thanks. Um, some of you have probably heard the story on NPR. I know some of you told me you never did hear it. Um, it was, um, I had some people tell me it was absolutely charming. They loved it, uh, thought it was very positive. Some told me it was not so positive. There was a, there was a, the reporter was at a basketball game and then was at a, um, a 4-H fundraiser that I was at, and it was wonderful. There were some quotes in there that were a little less than positive that I'm going to read. I'm going to read four of them. Um, number one, Independence, Kansas, a town with a rich past and an uncertain future. Number two, what keeps this small town hopeful when many of its good jobs are gone? Number three, we head to the main street of Independence, a shadow of what it used to be. And number four, and I, I think this one will be a little tough for some of you guys, that's a problem facing so many rural towns where opportunities are slim. The best and brightest leave and they don't look back. Ouch. Um, like I said, I've had some people say it was very fair and thought it was accurate. Some actually told me they thought it was very positive, but I've heard some say that it was uh, a little heavily on the negative side. Did any of you that hear it have any thoughts on that, whether you thought it was fine, positive, negative? Any takers on that one? Grab the microphone, if you would. I said I thought it was pretty negative. Okay. I mean, the, the best and the brightest leave. I don't believe that whatsoever. I guess that's the way I've always felt about it. Okay. Any other thoughts? Anybody else? Um, I, I thought it was fair either way. There are a lot of negative things that happen in just about any town, especially a town that's lost its hospital and some major jobs. But um, the best and brightest it's kind of parted down the middle. There's some that do come back, and there's some that really do prefer to move away, and that's okay. That happens in every community. Sure. It's a shame when it does, but that's just part of it. So I thought it was fair. Great. Thank you. Tim? Um, I'd like to say that in some ways, it's, if we can look on the bright side of all the changes this town's gone through, Whenever we come out the other side of it, whenever that is, and I think we're probably about there, this should be a stronger community than it ever has been. Um, the, the, the people, the culture, um, it's a really resilient people and a really resilient culture, and I think we have a lot to be proud of here. And I'm not from here, but I've seen a lot of places, and this is one of the best. Thank you. All right. I agree totally. I'm not from here either, as you know. Any other thoughts on that, that question or that report? I'll just share one thing. I think my biggest problem was that some of the negatives felt like there was a very clear rebuttal to those that didn't get mentioned. Um, you know, the hospital's leaving, but we're getting a new facility, and we've had new medical providers move into town, um, gained some doctors, lost some doctors. But, you know, we've, we've really had some growth, and it was an opportunity for the community to come together. and. Some communities could just fall apart after that, but it is definitely a testament to the type of people that live in this town and work here. And I don't feel like that got mentioned. 
Um, and then as far as, you know, the, the business is closing up downtown, and I was going to save this little tidbit for later, but I'll, I'll just start out with it to begin with. Um, in this kind of day and age, in the way people run their businesses and what their storefronts are like, maybe some of the windows are empty, but how many different businesses do we have that actually sell online now? How many businesses do we have that are purely service-based? And in what I do, I will tell you right now, in the last two years, there has been over 50 companies that are new companies in independence alone that are still in existence two years later. And that's just what I see at our firm. Um, and none of those companies have storefronts. So none of them are ones that maybe you might see, but they're obviously job opportunities for people who are here. And they feel like the economic base is enough to make it worthy to start those businesses. And on top of those, many of those clients are actually payroll clients, which means they have employees. So they're providing job opportunities for people that live and work in this community. Great. Thank you. Several people have already mentioned Mercy Hospital closing. Um, everybody's familiar with that. It has received a, a lot of negative attention for obvious reasons. How has the uh, hospital's closure directly impacted you and your family, if it has? Um, my wife actually worked for um, the outpatient clinic at uh, Mercy Hospital's rehab facility. Um, so she had to change jobs, and there was some uncertainty there for a little while. Um, wondering whether she would have to find a job in another community, but almost immediately she had an offer from a, uh, another firm in the community. So we really didn't, really didn't have to worry for too long at all. And in fact, it has worked out really, really well. Having two kids and another one on the way, we were nervous when we heard the hospital was gonna close. But we have lots of options around here. And from, being from Kansas City, it's normal to have to drive for an emergency room or a doctor, and there are lots of options right here in town. And so, if my son has an ear infection, I'm, it's okay because I have options right here in town. Okay. Any other thoughts on that, Brett? Um, just from a primary care perspective, um, I know that a lot of the other nurse practitioners have grown immensely since that um, closing of the hospital. And a lot of people that were seeking um, musculoskeletal care from the hospital, whether it be from opiates or our medication are now entering the chiropractic or the uh, physical therapy realm. So it's been good for business, unfortunately. <laughs> so you've seen an improvement in your business? Yes. Okay. Good to know. Um, I had both of my children at Mercy Hospital, so it was really sad to see it close down. And the thoughts of having any other children without having that hospital right there was a little bit disheartening. But I grew up in a town that didn't have an emergency room or a hospital immediately, so it reminded me of how spoiled I was for that short amount of time while living here. But the positive thing about not having an ER right there or a hospital right there is it's probably, at least in our case, made our family more intentional about what's really important to go to the hospital for and what's wasting a doctor's time. Um, it made us seek new clinics and it made us use alternative ways of health. So there are positive things that have happened as a result of that and our family's excited about the new clinics that have came to town and the new job opportunities. Great, thank you. Any other thoughts on that one? All right, um, the cost of living, the cost of living is normally less in smaller communities compared to big cities. Did, did the cost of living have any part in your decision to choose independence? Um, when we moved back just this last year, that wasn't a main factor, but when we did start looking at housing, it was definitely an exciting part to look at, because we moved from Manhattan and the, the housing is very high, um, as it probably would be in any college type town. And to come to Independence and see how much more your dollars will go was definitely a positive thing for us when we moved back and bought a house. Thanks. Anyone else, any thoughts on that? Does it seem like it's less expensive to live here than other cities? Definitely head nods on that one. All right. That's certainly been our experience that you get a lot of house for the money, like you said. Okay. For those of you raising uh, a family, was that part of, did that affect your decision to live in independence? Is there some advantage, some inherent advantage to raising kids in a small town or some of the amenities we have like the park and the zoo? Did that have any um, uh, did that carry any weight in your decision? 
So um, I have a 13-year-old son and then a 13-year-old and 11-year-old stepson. Um, my son is a massive basketball fan. It is all basketball all the time. And um, one problem we always had in Yodashe is he had nowhere to go to play basketball that was an actual true basketball court where, you know, you could dribble the basketball and it bounce off because it was on gravel somewhere. The basketball goals were the right height. Uh, basketballs were provided so he didn't have to bring him. He could wear his real basketball shoes. There's, there was absolutely nothing. They've, they've made a change just recently, but um, we moved. He's now in walking distance of the ash, and he is there every single day. And it's great because he is definitely on the Xbox a whole lot less. Um, <laughs> and even when he played football, he would go from football practice and then call and ask if he could go to the ash to go play. And I think that's an irreplaceable asset that's here. Um, the other piece, and honestly, this was one of the biggest pushes for me to go ahead and make the move from Neodoche to Independence um, in terms of the school systems, was in the, I believe it's just a year ago, the expansion of course offerings um, that ICC has through USD 446 now, um, with, the, with the right drive and with the right scheduling, um, students now have the opportunity to graduate high school with an associate's degree. That means the first two years of their college is done and practically paid for with almost nothing because they'd be eligible for scholarships here. And as someone who's paying off student loan debt, I can tell you that's incredibly exciting. Um, and it's an opportunity he would not have had in Yodashe. So that's a bump of independence actually being a larger town and having those advantages. Um, but I will tell you if I had, he was actually born in Wichita and had I stayed there, um, the other big difference is, is that I guarantee you he would not be out and about riding his bike around town or going to the park by himself, not even at the age of 13. And that is something he can do here, and I have no worries about it. So that is, that's an excellent thing about this town. Thanks, Ashley. Brittany? That was a really big decision on why we moved to Independence. We wanted to raise our family in a smaller community. And one of the reasons why we've stayed here, if we've gotten other job opportunities, um, that's one of the main things that will come up over and over again. We want to raise our family in a smaller community. I love going to Walmart or anywhere in town, and somebody will see me and ask how my kids are. And you just don't always get that in a bigger city. So the warmth that you get from people here and the caring, they care about your family, they want to know how they are. Um, it's been a really big factor on why we've wanted to stay and raise our kids in independence. For my family, I grew up in Cherryville, as I said before, and I, I did appreciate the school system and the education that we had there because it was all that I knew, but I did like um, when we chose to stay in Independence, which it wasn't a very hard decision because that's where all of our family is. Um, there are more opportunities for our children in these schools as far as arts go and sports, but for a while I was a little bit concerned because I grew up as an FFA kid and I was really sad that my children wouldn't get that opportunity for a long time. So it really, it made me happy to the point of almost tears when Independence decided to bring that program in because I thought it gave me quite a bit of an upper hand when I was going into college. So now that Independence has brought that into their high school program, I feel a little bit better for my children when they make the decision to be a part of those kind of programs. Great, yeah. Anybody else? Yes, I think you have a couple. <laughs> uh, growing up in Independence, uh, during the summers, we, I spent a lot of time at the park, the zoo, uh, the ball fields, you know, playing baseball and watching my friends play, uh, going to the pool. Um, so that was, a, I've never left Independence, but that was a big decision, or it impacted us to stay in Independence so we could see our kids go through those same memories. And I, I love what everybody is saying. I kind of have the flip side. I never wanted to move back to Independence. And I mean, that's the honest truth. And, and I, I wanted bad. to live in a, yeah, I wanted to live in a big city and have all those opportunities. I wanted uh, my future family to have those as well. And I went and lived it. And I saw what my colleagues and my friends, and I saw how crazy their schedules were and how many, uh, sporting events they had to go to and tutoring and special lessons and it just freaked me out <laughs> to be honest it was it was too much it was too many options and that's one of my reasons for moving back to town was because there is that sense of community there is is that neighboring sense and 
Um, we definitely don't have as many different opportunities in the sense of the sporting activities at a young age and, and that type of thing, but I see that as an asset. Great. All right, others on that? Jocelyn just mentioned um, sense of community. That was something I was going to ask specifically about. Um, we've lived in other small towns, and some small towns have a tremendous sense of community, and some I don't think do. Some are not terribly friendly to newcomers. So do you feel like we have a strong sense of community? Are we friendly, welcoming to newcomers? Tim, you're a newcomer. I am a newcomer. This is by far the most welcoming place I've ever lived. Um, it doesn't. It, it, it definitely helped that my wife grew up here. Um, and so I, I had that connection with people, and in fact, there were people who would say, oh, I was at your wedding, and I'd say, oh, really? Oh, it's great. <laughs> um, which, of course, I still feel bad about to this day, but, um, but just having that foot in the door, I guess you could say, um, really helped me feel comfortable here fast, but it also didn't take long before I felt like I was developing my own identity um, and, and my own relationships. It's, it's not hard to meet people here. It's not hard to be friends with people here. In fact, it's the easiest thing to do. It just feels right because of the size of the town and because of how accessible it is. Thank you, Tim. Others? Um, I mean, I, I, not like I moved very far to get here. Um, I'm just down the highway. But there was a difference of having a lot of people that I knew through work and a lot of people that I knew through, I mean, I'm in Rotary. I've been in Sir Optimus. I've, been treasurer for a couple of different organizations, and um, of course I meet people that way, but it's it's different than developing um, friendships, and it's also different than developing um, friends with the parents of the kids that go to school with your kid, which is a very important relationship to be able to, to have, and that was one that I was actually a little bit concerned about moving over here because that was the people I didn't know, um, but I will say... Um, I am completely and totally impressed with the families that um, of my son's friends, and you know he has friends here that really have things in common with him now because there was a, a, a broader group of, of kids to choose from, of course. So he found the basketball group, but um, you know, I to share a tiny personal piece, I, in getting ready to have surgery, these these people that hardly know me from anything, have already, just because they know my son, have already offered to either help out getting him to school um, or help out getting him to practices or picking him up from school and bringing him home, seeing if I needed any help with any school work, um, any help with meals, and, and, and not so much because they knew me, but just because I cared about me as somebody in the community and as another parent. And, um, you know, I, I was out as a single mom entirely in Yorkshire and did not have that offer come up once. So, and I've had that offer come up from five different individuals and I, I'm very impressed and, and amazed and humbled by that, so. That's great. I'd actually like to challenge uh, Mayor Hogshead on this because <laughs> um, I, Mayor. I am uh, from here, like I said, grew up here and the guy knows more people than I do. I don't know how he did it, but so apparently people are friendly enough to newcomers that yeah. you, you become friends with a lot of folks. Yeah, we moved to another small town, and it was not this way. It was very close. People, everybody had lived there all their lives. They had plenty of friends. They didn't really need new friends. So we lived there 20 years, and I didn't know, you know, 20 people practically. And here, you're right. I, I feel like, wow, my wife says I'm chatty Cathy. Um, so I, and plus I got drafted by Leonard. Leonard, thanks a lot for <laughs> sticking me on city commission. I'm sure that was a big part of it. But... Um, you know, it's, it, it is, to me, it's an amazing city, absolutely amazing. We, we love everything about it. Now, there are some downsides to being too friendly a city, too close. Everybody knows I'm married to a doctor, so they ask me for medical advice, you know. <laughs> They'll say, hey, dude, look at this boil. You know, what do I do about this? I, I'm like, hey, I just sleep with her, you know, but, um, I mean, is it, do you see, do you also see some drawbacks to being too familiar, like kind of like there's no privacy almost? Has anybody else experienced that, or is that a me thing? Not necessarily a privacy kind of thing, but when you have a close community, it almost turns into a family kind of atmosphere, and when people don't agree, 
then you know when people don't agree. <laughs> and it's usually droves or teams of people that don't agree. But eventually, the next day, people are like, okay, we're over it. Let's, let's move on and do something else about it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Tim, were you about to say something? Um, yeah. I, again, having lived other places gives me a, a different perspective on it than maybe somebody who's lived here their whole life. But um, it's, it's not hard to find the common ground at the same time. You can find something where people disagree here, and, and then the community is divided. But it's very easy to find the common ground and to, and to sort of bridge the divide and bring people back together. And that's sometimes, if, if you get the timing right, it only takes about a week, and then it's New Wallace season and everybody's friends again. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, t timing is everything, uh, as yeah. I say. Yeah, true. Anything else on that? I would like to uh, mention our Chamber of Commerce. You know, um, a lot of the cities we lived in, the Chamber of Commerce was not active. It, it was defunct. And even some of the big cities, the Chamber of Commerce was not very effective. I don't know if everybody knows this, but in 2016, the Chamber of Commerce membership grew by 32. We now has 267 members. This was mentioned earlier. There are an amazing number of smaller businesses popping up here. Um, how does this make you feel about the community, that our Chamber of Commerce is, is growing like that? Good. <laughs> um, it makes me feel great, and I, I'm, I'm not, I guess, uh, I'm not a business owner, but that makes me feel great because I know that just by us being here and deciding to move to this town or stay in this town, we're contributing to that, and um, to be able to contribute to not only the the, the thriving, bustling independence that we know today. Um, but but one that's going to be here for a long time. Brett, what about you? Uh, it seems to me that folks are kind of gathering together a little bit more. Um, I feel there are some new businesses, but um, maybe just a lot that weren't part of the chamber, and that's the reason that the number is growing. Okay. Partially due Fair to Lisa enough. Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Hope she's not in the audience. She'll get the big head going. <laughs> well, I'll, I know is basically is in my job, I rely on other local businesses um, in supporting, you know, us and what we do and, and to see other uh, businesses that are active in the chamber and want to be involved and support the community, you know, that helps all of us and especially for what I do, it, it definitely makes a big impact. So it's Great. good to see that involvement yeah. and, and activity. Great. Thank you. Any, any other thoughts on that? All right. Um, there's a lot of, oh, I hate to say controversy, but a lot of mixed feelings about our downtown, whether we're losing our downtown, we don't have the retail we used to. Once Walmart moves in, you start, you know, you lose, you lose retail stores to Walmart, frankly, um, although we get a lot of sales tax revenue from Walmart. So do you feel like we have enough options downtown to keep it viable? I love our downtown. I think it's awesome. Um, I think there are a lot of haters out there who like to complain about our downtown. And I just challenge them to go to the downtowns in Southeast Kansas besides Independence. And you'll be shocked with what you see. Um, and not to name any of those communities, but everyone is struggling. And I feel like Independence looks amazing compared to those. As a consumer, um, I think there's, there's good options. Of course, I don't expect everything to be down there. But, but we have some, some great shops. We have some great restaurants. Um, I know when I have friends come from out of, out of town, we take them downtown every Saturday morning. We go out every, every evening that we can. Um, and, and we show off what we have here. And, and I, re I, I really think Independence downtown, of course, it's not the downtown it used to be. But compared to the other communities and, and to what I need as a consumer, our downtown's doing very well. In Kansas City, we have lots of options, um, but I love our downtown. I love taking my family when they come into town uh, to go downtown and eat, go to eat, and then you can go shopping. There's, there's lots of little things that you can go and do and take your family, and I've said this before, but you know, you're going to see people also down there. You don't get that in a bigger town, so you can go shop downtown and then see people, and, and just it's just a good feeling. And I haven't always lived 
here in Independence, but I know that, to be honest, our downtown has seen better days. Not that it's the worst downtown in the world, but I would be lying if I said I hated seeing as many empty shops as we do. And I wish there's something we could do about that, but I also know that there, it is an uphill battle for people to try to revive some of those buildings, and it's really expensive for them. So I wish that there was more incentive for people to do something about that, but right now, I think we just have to endure some of the, the growing pains until it's, it's more doable. Um, after Roger Brooks came, I had hoped to see a few more improvements made, but it's a slow, it's a slow improvement and I have seen improvements. I'm just ready to see it all done. I'm with you on that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes you feel like you're moving at the pace of a glacier when you try to make changes to a city. Any other thoughts on that one? What about fast food? I have, I have friends tell me, I got to go to Bartlesville or Tulsa because I have to go to a fill-in-the-blank, you know, KFC or Rib Crib or Burger King. Do you feel like that's something we're lacking terribly? I mean, is that something you miss every day? I don't care about fast food. I just like Annie Mae's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care that they don't have a window. I'll just go in and wait. <laughs> Good. Food is not the reason I decided to move down here with my wife. <laughs> not that the food is bad here. I'm just saying that was not the only reason. I mean, there's so much more to this community than the restaurants it has to offer. And I think that is kind of, in some ways, yeah, it's literal, but in some ways that's a metaphor for the attitude I think we have to have. Independence is not the kind of place where you go if you just want to be entertained. It's the kind of place you go if you want to make a difference, you want to be involved, you want quality of life, however you define that. I, I, I define quality of life in a way that is compatible with this community. Great, thanks. Uh, Derek, what about you? Do you have to, do you have food cravings you have to take care of in other cities? Uh, I mean, yeah, it is nice to get away, get away from Independence, go to mm -hmm. a bigger city, go into the bigger restaurants. Um, but the restaurants we do have here, there's a lot of pride you know, like anime is like, it looks nice. It looks, yeah. it's very appealing. Um, just, and, and to go along with the storefronts, there are a lot of empty storefronts, but the ones that are, are there, they've got a lot of passion and pride in independence. Like the movie theater, they just put a lot of money into their, to upgrading. Um, just a lot of people like to throw stones. Um, and they don't like to see the positive things. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put in a quick plug for Vintage Steakhouse. <laughs> that place is awesome. Yeah, fair enough. I'll, I'll add one other thing because I, I'm going from a perspective of going from sm smaller town up to Independence. And um, I was super excited to move here because Independence has something that's open past 10 p.m. Uh, New York State is not. Um, when I moved away, there was nothing that had a drive through because um, Sonic was still closed. So that was a big improvement of coming here. And um, and, and honestly, the couple of, of restaurants they've had, they're, they're closing, and Independence is opening new things. So, you know, I, I think, like I said, you know, before you throw stones, sometimes we have to realize how much value we really have in this town and take it, it's really not fair to compare Independence to, to Wichita or Kansas City, um, in that sense because that's you know you're not comparing apples to apples but if you want to compare it to something compare it to the rest of the small towns even in throughout Kansas let alone just southeast Kansas because the the way the town takes pride in taking care of the town and its people um, the type of businesses that are existing I bet you most people who said that all those the, the downtown looks so empty I bet you if you asked them to name five businesses that were downtown they probably haven't been downtown recently enough or paid enough attention they could probably even manage to name five of them. Um, what they don't realize is how many new businesses have opened through downtown or, or different groundbreakings that have happened. Um, and so same thing happens with the food side. I, I will go out of town for sushi. I wish we had sushi, but otherwise um, I am, am very pleased to have what we have. Um, and yes, the, the vintage special is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> And I just want to add a tiny bit and on top of yours, the sense of community and food wise, um, we're really lucky to have some of the restaurants that we do that are nice, our sit down restaurants and not fast food. And I didn't realize 
how much of a tradition it's been, but I'm sure half of the people up here have time hop. But it's kind of nice to look back and realize that the last, uh, within the last seven years of my daughter's birthday, we've made it a tradition to go and eat at Brothers because that's the nice place for her birthday and we don't always want to make a mess in our kitchen. <laughs> so I didn't realize it until looking at my time hop, but we are really lucky to have some of the nicer restaurants that we do and I could care less about having a drive through I grew up in a small town that had two things that were drive through and really those weren't the most important things for us. Great, thank you. So sort of along the same topic, I, I have some very, very dear friends that say Walmart hurt our city when they moved to town because it hurt the downtown, which I agree. So I refuse to set foot in Walmart. I've never set foot in Walmart, and I absolutely never will. So I go to Owasso to Costco for all my shopping, which drives me a little bit crazy. But, I mean, is, do you guys think of Walmart as a nice thing to have in the city or a curse? Or both? Well, I mean, I, I think always it hurts downtown in some ways. Sure. But um, if we didn't have a Walmart and we weren't the one reaping the sales tax benefits or whatever other kind of benefits or reaping the fact that, I mean, there's a bunch of people in this town that probably have jobs out at Walmart. Um, Coffeeville would probably be getting it. Parsons would be getting it. Bartlesville would be getting it. Um, Owasso would be getting it. Because people who want to shop at Walmart are going to shop at Walmart. Um, you know... And, and honestly, how many places are there in a small downtown that, that, for one, sell, you know, multiple kinds of shampoo to choose from, or you know, soap and things like things that you need for your, your your dog? And there's just a lot of variety that you have there. So I mean, I think it has a benefit in its own way. I mean, I have a love hate relationship with Walmart. I mean, it it saves everybody's bottom line, certain things that you buy there. But at the same time, you know, you hate to see it take away and cheapen the value of things that are purchased at retail shops. But you also have to have individuals who want to spend their money on something that see the value in paying the additional price for better quality at these shops. Because if they don't, they're not going to shop there anyway. Um, they're going to go somewhere that they can buy it, whether it's Amazon or Walmart or somewhere else. Um, so I think having it in town at least gives us the opportunity to take some benefit from it. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll throw in my two cents, and that is that um, if, if price is the only determining factor in your decision to buy something, then Walmart's going to win every time because they can. But when I'm buying something that is, is important to me for some other reason besides putting food in my stomach or my family's, then usually money is not the only thing at play. There are other things to consider. I want to feel like I'm a valued customer when I go somewhere. Um, when I go to when I go to Brian's store, I know that I'm buying tea from a guy that that is glad to have me in his shop. Um, and, and that soap. relationship, yeah, and soap and candles. I mean, you can't you can't put a price on the relationship with the person that owns the store. And I also know that um, I'm 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 not going to be disappointed with the quality of it and the value. I know that it's going to contribute to the community, and that's, again, that's a core reason why I'm here, is to contribute to this community, because I know that it's going to give back to me as well. Great. Thank you, Tim. Any other thoughts on that one? So let's talk about what you guys do for fun in your free time, hobbies or hunting or fishing. Do you have opportunities to do the things you like to do here in your free time, or do you go elsewhere? Who hasn't talked lately? Trevor, how about yeah, you? Know, I was like, this is about you. <laughs> um, Independence in Southeast Kansas in general has probably the best deer hunting and arguably in the country. So is that aspect of it brings a lot of people in, out of state hunters and stuff like that. Are around. you a hunter? Yes, I am. Hunter, fisher, it's pretty much all I do for fun. Um, <laughs> Perfect. So that's all I can say about it. I like to uh, play basketball and tennis, and I could do so here in Independence at Hastings Basketball Court and at the Kim Brown Tennis Courts. Don't have to go anywhere for that. Great. Who else? Well, as a mother parent, I don't necessarily enjoy going out to clubs and concerts that often, so that's not important to me. But I do like that we have a lot of outdoors opportunities at Elk City Reservoir nearby. And I forget sometimes how amazing those trails are. 
and how nice the playgrounds are there for my kids to play at. Um, it's nice when we do want a little bit of a night out to have some of our local bars that we can go to and sometimes have live music. Sometimes I wish we could have more performances and independence to bring other people in. But we, we are lucky to have places like the William Inge Theater that have performances occasionally and a place to host things. I just wish we could do it more often. For me, moving back to Independence was huge because I would drive back here, make a three-hour drive all the time to go hunt and fish because it's one of my wow. favorite hobbies and golfing. Um, no, no good hunting around Manhattan. There is, but it's a, it's a little harder when you say your last name and here people know who you are. <laughs> you know, that helps a little bit where you say it up there and they're like, "How do you even say that?" You know, they don't know who you are. And uh, so that was big to build, move back here and have accessibility and and have that right out your back door. Um, so that was a big plus for me. I was very excited about it. And also, you know, we love to golf, my wife and I, and golfing here is much cheaper. You know, you can get to play uh, way less than what I could there as far as membership and anything else goes. So that was another big positive. So for recreation, it was a big plus for us to, to move back to Independence. Great. Anyone else on that topic? Fun? Free time? All right. So um, I want to jump back to... Um, Bad news, you know, in the past several years, we've had significant business closures, closings. We already mentioned Mercy Hospital, of course, but also Amazon. Um, have you personally seen a significant decline in our community because of these closings we've experienced? I, I have it personally. Um, as far as my business aspect, the last five years, we have doubled with everything we've done every year, and it's new wow. construction, um, lots of old construction, demolition, believe it or not, it's a good thing in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make Mine way too. for new. Um, so I, I don't see us going down, and as far as Mercy going, I haven't touched on that, but I think we'll end up with better health care in the near future than we had since Mercy's gone. Um, so I don't like to say. Okay. So you haven't seen any decline in your business, just no. the opposite? Just the opposite. Oh, okay. I haven't personally seen any decline in my area or career, but um, I know that it's going to require some growing pains and a little bit of hard times after those places left before we can move forward. I know there's going to be better things coming along, but I think some people don't realize just how many job opportunities are still open here. Um, it's just whether they're willing to take those job opportunities. And I think that's more of an issue right now than having positions to fill. Great. Thank you, Amy. Um, so I work at the Fab Lab, and um, I work with a guy who is just obsessed with entrepreneurship <laughs> and innovation. And yeah. he, he's really an inspiring guy to be around. And that's Jim Carell. A lot of you know him. Is he here? Are you kissing up? Uh, <laughs> I, I wish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but... When I say he's obsessed with entrepreneurship and innovation, what I mean is he is really um, passionate about seeing people uh, uh, basically rise above their circumstances and, and, um, and follow their dreams. And, and that sounds really cliche, and, and it is, but what I'm getting at is the people who left Amazon, who ended up at ICC, um, there were a lot of them. Those that came in contact with Jim Carell are probably doing better off than those who didn't. And, and, Jim has probably contributed as much as a lot of people um, in this area to uh, really spurring on small businesses and um, encouraging people to um, encouraging people to take a chance on uh, being masters of their own fate. So um, I, I'm, I'm not officially a small a small business owner, but I, I definitely consider myself um, more entrepreneurial and basically more capable of weathering the storm when the economy takes a downturn because. It's all about being able to find ways to, to um, I don't know, find, find ways to avoid the pitfalls of getting bogged down in minimum wage labor for your whole mm -hmm. life. Right. Thanks, Tim. Um, in, in regards to what we see go through our firm, I mean, uh, well, we had clients that had job changes or maybe location changes, especially with the hospital close. Um, we continue to see client growth year after year. Um, in fact, we had more new clients last year than what we'd had in the previous couple of years. Um, and so that's, that's 
always a good sign because you know that we're only taking a percentage of, of the individuals that are coming to town or starting businesses or or seeing growth um, in their lives. You know when they they reach out and maybe go to a CPA versus maybe other ways they done taxes in the past or something. Um, but other ways that you know I had the opportunity to be in, involved with MCAC and I and I know that's countywide, but um, some of us maybe don't see the background of it, but. I, I think some of the adversity that this town has seen has actually really spurred on some amazing opportunities and really let people rise to a, a level of potential that maybe we didn't even know they had before. Um, MCAC has put in so much work to try to, to bring in businesses to fill those different areas and, and, and a lot of counties don't have something along those lines and that's, that's really a benefit that we have here and they're working in the background with you know, little to no recognition by the general public to even know all the work they're putting in to try to bring these businesses in and fill those facilities. Um, and they're, they're not the only one involved. There's, there's multiple individuals working there. Um, but, you know, as, as far as the hospitals go, you know, the, the passion that came out of that, um, it's not all good, um, for sure. I mean, we saw a lot of back and forth and back and forth when the hospital left. Um, but, you know, passion means people care. And people don't care about something that's that's dying. Um, people don't. If, if people didn't care about this town, we'd have a problem. But the fact that people care, the fact that people that were that passionate, that they were that upset when it left, and that they moved so quickly to try to find multiple types of resolutions for it, um, really is a testament to what this town is made of and what the people are made of. And it brought people out that weren't originally involved in in the city. You know, it it really people just came out of the woodwork because that was something that mattered to them. And so, you know, when you have something bad happen in your life, you know, you have two options. You can either fall down and just stay on the ground and people can walk over you or you can rise above it and get better. And this town has by far absolutely completely risen above it and come together and done something amazing to bring all of the medical providers in um, to try to bring in new businesses um, to promote job growth in the, the businesses that exist. Um, you know, there's been growth in your nonprofit organizations that are around here um, to really provide extra services for people. Um, the, the community mission for improved housing that's come in and, you know, and that's tried to help people with their houses. I just, I think that some of the negative is actually some of our greatest benefit that we've had. Um, and if you look at it the right way. I'll get off my high horse, sorry. Thanks, Ashley. <laughs> That's a great thought. You know, when we, when we do get a new employer, like when we brought Cessna in, um, it's sometimes disappointing to me how few of the people working in independence choose to live in independence. You know, you look at the statistics, you mentioned Mac, you know, a business like Standard Motor Products, maybe 25, don't quote me on this, I'm guessing, maybe 25% of the people that work there live in independence. You know, a lot of them live in surrounding communities, which is great, but a lot of them live in Bartlesville. Some even commute up from Tulsa, I know, to work like at Cessna. So I'd love to know each of your thoughts on what we need to do to make independence more attractive to these folks. People that live here, that work here, I'd love to have them live here, too. Gary, I think you know my answer on this one because we've no, talked no about idea. it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm 60. I have a terrible memory. Uh, yes. Again. <laughs> and um, it's simply recruiting. Um, when a business is moving to town or is hiring somebody, they need to get in touch with people like you and like the chamber and like us young professionals and say, hey, this person is going to be working here in Independence. We would love for them to live in Independence. What can you do? And we come up with stuff. We go to dinner. We have painting parties um, with, with Jim Hayward. It's, it's a lot of fun, and, and we recruit them. We are successful at recruiting them. But we need the businesses to reach out to us in order to make that connection because the value of independence is the people. And so it's not showing them a brochure. Um, any, any community can do that. It's showing them our faces and having conversations and making them see our love for independence. I think it's so important to have groups like YPI because you can see their passion. Um, that's what they need to see, you given a tour of independence and you come here and I remember our realtor gave us a tour and it was awesome. I could see how much she loved this community and I thought, wow, this is going to be a really great place to live. So if we can connect with people and recruit them in and show them our passion, I think we can get more people in. Yeah. 
Agree. Any other thoughts on that? Well, I don't think it's a good idea to build a whole lot of glitz and glamour to attract these people because if they're attracted here for those reasons, then if something a little shinier comes along, they might leave anyway. And then we're left with a bunch of empty hotels and a bunch of empty restaurants that we didn't really want or need except for these people we were trying to attract. So I think the organic growth is important. And you know, not to go all the way to the extreme where we say if they don't already want to live here, then we don't want them anyway. I think that's not a good idea either. But there's got to be some middle ground. So don't, don't put on a false front trying to win somebody over and just they have to love us for who we are. But we need a, sh a chance to show them who we are, I think I heard. Any other thoughts on that? Um, we don't have too much time left, but one thing I was dying to ask. You know, the uh, city commissioners take a lot of heat all the time about taxes. Our taxes are too high. Our taxes are ridiculous. Do something about our taxes. Spend less. But on the other hand, you know, people want good streets. They love the zoo. You know, think how many, how few cities in the state try to support a city zoo. It's just a couple. And, you know, it's a free zoo. We don't collect any fees. So is it worth some amenities like the park and the zoo um, to, you know, pay a little more in taxes than we might otherwise? Silence. Um, so I have probably some some additional perspective on that just because I, I see some more of what happens in the town just from what I do. Um, but I am completely amazed by the amount of projects that our city is continually doing for improvement. Um, you know, if you look at all of the, the road projects that went on and you look at the quality of our roads throughout town, um, and then like, like I went down to Tulsa two days ago and even though they're doing construction everywhere, you can hardly drive on any of their towns, and and they're you know they're not putting the the funds into the infrastructure and and independence is. But with that comes comes taxes, comes um, increases in sales tax rates to try to match grants that they're bringing in. You know the the just the administrative burden on some of the projects that are going on around this town is is um, would cause anybody else to have a headache in a in a heartbeat. Um, but they, they really are striving to, I feel like that the city is striving to, to do as much as they can to offer as much value to citizens. And, you know, we can either be stagnant, um, and have our tax rates remain the same or go lower, or we can be on a path of improvement. And, and I, for one, would rather live in a town that is constantly trying to improve, constantly trying to add value. Um, especially as a business owner because, you know, my clients come from people that, that primarily live in this area. And if the town's not doing something to encourage people to stay here or to move here, then, you know, I, it's hard to maintain a business. Um, and, and so I, I feel like that as long as we're continually seeing improvement, and we are, that the taxes, they, they, have, their, they have their place uh, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. That's a very nice way to say it. <laughs> they have their place. Any other thoughts on that one? Do you feel like we? Do you feel like we could close the zoo and not really hurt the city? Because I have people Definitely suggest that not. once in a while. That would that would make a lot of people very angry. Yeah, tell me about it. And, and a lot so, of children. Yes. So we want to make a one day a week trash pickup too. Believe me, but <laughs> but it's costly. Um, some, we've mentioned passion several times. Several of you have said we're passionate about this. Some of you have actually been criticized, I know, because you're so passionate about the community. What, um, you know, can you explain why you're so passionate? And, you know, give me a quick summary. What makes you so passionate about independence? Nobody's reaching out to grab the microphone, which means I have to answer because I was holding it. Last. Or just stick it in somebody's hand. That's what I would do. <laughs> My passion comes from, um, in a lot of ways, the, the, the way I was raised. I was raised to care, and I was raised to contribute and, and um, add my energy where I can to improve, um, improve the lives of myself and others. And so that's... Something that's just a belief that I've always had, 
And um, I feel like my passion, when it's at its best, really does a lot of good for people. Um, and I don't want to... I'm, I'm not a hero because most of the time I'm doing these projects that I do either at, at the college or elsewhere with other people. And I think that's a really um, interesting aspect of this town. Like we've been saying all along, it's easy to meet people and it's easy to bump into people who share your passion and who share your vision. That's when stuff really begins to happen. When you can find a handful of other people to, to, um, to help you get something done. Whether it's to paint a house for somebody in need or a clothing Start a recycling drive. program. Start a recycling program. There you go. That's a classic example. But... Um, but it's not something that any of us can really do alone. And I think when we are alone, that might be when we take some criticism. But when we band together with other people, it's a, hard, a whole lot harder to criticize us for the passions that we have. Great. Thanks, Tim. I'm glad you had the microphone in your hand. Gives other people time to think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never actually tried to think of or tried to define why I'm passionate about the things I am passionate about in this town. But as a creative person... It's natural for me to want to see people be inspired or to be inspired and see my children be inspired. And when I walk around town and I see the potential for something to happen, I really want to tell other people about it or I want other people to understand it. And sometimes that gets shot down, especially as a younger person in town. That's happened before. So a few times it's made me shut up. But it's nicer that we have young professionals now and more people coming together in our particular age group that are saying, well, I've thought about doing this too, or I think this could work. And sometimes they might not happen, but it, it's nice that we have a community that's coming up that's easier to talk to about it, that won't shoot you down right away. So I, I'm passionate about the things happening in independence for my kids, and because I'm a creative person and I wanna see the vision that I see come to life for other people that can't see it. I hope that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Amy. Anyone else? Jocelyn or Brett? Um, so I have a passion and a love for the area, um, not only because I work here and really enjoy my job, but um, it's the only place in the world where I can see everyone that I'm friends with and family all in one place. So it's, it's really cool to um, have that here in Independence, and I like like Shelby had said that now we're growing for some reason. Um, people in their late twenties, early thirties are deciding to come back to Independence. I can't describe why. I can only tell you why I did it, and the majority was family, hobbies, and and friends. So, um, but now it seems like we're really growing. We, I talked to a, another fellow earlier that said you know there was a huge gap between our age group and their age group. So there seemed to be, I don't remember it, but um, around the 50 year old age, and then now we're skipping 20 years and now we're growing at the 30 year old range in independence. So can't explain it, but uh, it's, it's nice. Okay. Thank you. I would have to agree with everything everyone is saying here on stage. Um, I'm definitely very passionate about our community and what I challenge people um, when they don't like living here, I, I say, well, you should travel and you should go somewhere else and see what it's like there. And if you like it there better, then, then you should go there. There's opportunities there. We all chose to be here in Independence for our own reasons. Um, we value certain things that apply to us. Uh, like, like you asked earlier, who else has had a job offer somewhere else and they would have had a move? And several people raised their hands. But people choose to live here for our own reasons. Um, and I, I mean, we've already said why I'm passionate about here, and it's the people. Um, you can't meet nicer people than you have here. You know, we, you, we walk downtown, you walk in any store, and you get a hello in, in your first name. And people really do genuinely care about you and their strong relationships because, because of that. And I think it inspires a lot of people to do bigger and better things. And um, an another subject matter, too, is the volunteerism in our community is absolutely huge, absolutely huge. I mean, you just look at Nia Walla alone and how many volunteers it takes to run that nonprofit event where thousands of people come to the, the town. I mean, it's incredible. And that's just one of the several, several volunteer activities um, we have. P 
people, they, they don't go home and just sit and do nothing. People go to work and then they do something after, and it's, it involves their passion and involves their community. Yeah, I've got to agree. That was one thing that absolutely stunned us when we got here is the, the number of people that it takes to make Neawala go and, and the Inge Festival and Astra. And holy smokes, it's just absolutely amazing. There's that word, Jerry. Um, Gary Morrison. Where did Gary go? Hey, um, we were going to give some kind of prize, weren't we? Is that? Yeah, is that? That is still on. Okay. Okay. Do we need a little more time? I am a little bossy, but there is a reason for it. The reason was is that the person that shared the most hashtags tonight was going to give props. <laughs> she posed that beforehand. Now you know. It's just... Becky. <laughs> Becky Thornton. Hey. All right, Becky. All right. also like to open up uh, the floor for any questions from the audience. So if anybody has any questions, we'd like to give a microphone to Gary and he will bring it to you. Um, what haven't we talked about? Here's one over here, Gary. Now we need to keep one up Where here. were you kids in 2009? Because I needed your help. <laughs> when I opened Shannon's Market and had to close it in 2012. So, uh, it's amazing what you're doing. And if I had it to do all over again, I'd lose for this community another half a million dollars and do it all over again. But I don't have it to do now, so that won't happen. But it is an awesome community. I'm a foreign girl. I'm your token foreign girl. I've been here for 24 years, which is, was going to be my interim town. And everybody was so nice, and I'm like, Dorothy, stop it. I've got to leave. Our but token it, Australian. Yeah. Yeah, good. So, I'm sorry, I'm new here. You, you opened a shop that didn't Shannon's Market. The, everybody here knows it. I don't. You, but, oh, come yeah. on. Ask the Clifflishers. No? Yeah, sure. It was the best place okay. to get steaks. <laughs> it was. And, and that was, that's our biggest mistake. We should have had a little fabulous butcher shop and not tried to compete. And we we may not have been thriving, but we would have survived. So you were just ahead of your time, is what you're saying, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> I hate that. And now they're here. Timing is everything. It is. It is. Anyway, Sorry, enough of that. I did not know you were associated with Shannon's Market. I was the other half of it. This is also just a comment, but and it's more for the people behind me because I know all them. Um, but you asked what makes us passionate. Shelby, Jason, and I know there's a bunch more, but going through the dog park process, we've hit many hurdles, and you've even come up to me. Jerry has come up to me. How's the dog park going? And it's just your questions and your motivation just helps us power through those hurdles and just helps me be more passionate. So just thank you guys for doing that. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Every time we recruit a new person to town, a new young person to town, they always ask if we're going to get a dog park. So get your butt in gear, man. No, very excited about that. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure, Mike. Yeah, this is when you ask for donations. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a question. I have another comment. Great. Um, I, a lot of you probably don't know who I am. I'm Lacey Bohr. I work at Southeast Kansas Works. So part of my job is to visit area chambers. And I just want to give another kudos to our chamber because um, attending a lot of chamber events, ours are by far um, eons and eons better than um, a lot of the area chambers that I go to. And just attending First Friday every month and seeing the amount of people that show up month after month to be informed and learn about our community is really awesome. So, Thank you. It is truly amazing. Any other comments? Man, you guys are giving me a workout today, man. Come on. A resident attorney. I hear all the librarian. fast food places. You guys Do you feel like you're on the Ricky Lake show, Gary? Yeah. <laughs> Running over no people chairs. with the question. So I got here late, and I don't know if you covered this. I want to know um, what your ideal community looks like. What 
things that you would like to have in Independence that you don't have, like the dog park, that would bring people here? Thanks, Jerry. Any comments on that? Bike lanes, lots and lots of bike lanes. Um, I, ref I before before Independence, I lived in Kansas City. Lots of traffic in Kansas City, but also lots of bike lanes in Kansas City, and lots of cyclists as a result of that. Um, before that, I lived in Flagstaff. I would say probably a third of Flagstaff commutes to work by bicycle, especially if they work at the university. Um, this is, is possibly the most bike-friendly town I've ever seen that doesn't like bicyclists very much. <laughs> it, it's, it's relatively small. The roads are, are well-paved. They're wide. Um, uh, in fact, one of my fondest memories of riding my bike in this town was when they had just completed the West Main project at, at night, and almost nobody knew about it. And here was this big, wide swath of freshly <laughs> paved asphalt, and I just cruised. It was great. Um, but. I would love to see more bike paths. Um, I would I'd love to see any bike paths in this town um, so that it's safer to ride. Thanks, Tim. Other thoughts? Things we're missing? Here? Um, I would like to see our downtown area shut down for more community bonding um, events. Pittsburgh has a successful art walk that they shut the street down for multiple times during the summer. And I think it creates community, and it's also helped a lot of businesses, and I think it's grown the downtown in Pittsburgh quite a bit. And I know some people get irritated with having to reroute their way to different places, but if we just found more excuses to shut down the street and do something fun together, I think that would help in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I love that idea. You know, the kids' movie, the downtown kids' movie, holy smokes, you get hundreds of kids out there with their parents, and it's just absolutely rocks i can i would love to do some other events like that i mean not for kids but where you close down a block and yeah great suggestion i'd like to see more positive pr um i think a lot of people talk amongst themselves about how much we love our town but the thing is if, is if we really want to recruit people who haven't experienced the love of independence they read about it and so they go online and they read about it and when the first thing you do is Google and you don't come up with a positive message, it's not good for our community. So more social media, there needs to be more public articles. It needs, the buzz needs to get out there publicly besides amongst ourselves in our own conversations. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know how you do that, but I agree totally. You almost can't look on social media without finding something negative. I'm sorry? Marketer, you want to take it, Brittany? <laughs> uh, I'm not a marketing expert, um, but I know a lot of social media can be very helpful. Oh. The question was, how do we do that? How do we make more public? Um, I, I'm always a fan of social media. That's where I go. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer. I just know, in my opinion, social media is a start. Um, and having good marketing from our, you know, our, our, our entities here in town is definitely something good. I, I know I follow other communities just to follow their marketing tactics, and it's fascinating. So you should, you're saying that we should set up an Instagram account for independence? No, it's not that simple. <laughs> oh, well, that's a start. That's a tough, that's a constant battle, I think. I think spending more time, and, and this is an issue like nationwide, spending less time complaining about things online and more time talking about what you're excited about is important. But make sure that you remember the businesses that are local that do the marketing to help make things happen for the good events that are happening. So make sure you go into the sign shops, the radio station, the advertising specialists, and put the word out when you're doing something that you think is important or that you need people at, because just word of mouth doesn't always work. But word of mouth, when you talk about how amazing it is, it's great, too. Yeah, thanks. I know that Hoyt made a uh, video for the city a few months ago. And when I show that to people, you know, I just said, OK, if you want to know something about independence, watch this four-minute video that Hoyt put together. And they always say, holy smokes, that's, that's an amazing little town. But it's so hard to overcome all the negative out there, which seems to be more prevalent on social media, I guess. 
Actually, since we're speaking about social media, I just wanted to throw out, we do have a question from our live feed, so I'd like to get that in if we could. Correct. And they want to know what kind of businesses do we not have that we would like to see? So what would we like to see come to town? Throw out your ideas. Sushi. <laughs> Meat <market>. Yes. <laughs> sushi. We mentioned sushi. Only the good stuff. But, yes, yeah, sushi. Yeah. <laughs> In the back? Yep. Is that though? All right. North 8. This Chinese restaurant on North 8 says they have sushi. So go try it. See if it's any good. I haven't tried it yet. New China. New China, I believe it is. Okay. Good. Thanks, Val. I'll try it. I'll let everybody know. Go see John. Only good things. Yeah. Only good things. <laughs> Is, yeah, is, there a, is there a way for like a, somebody who's very technical to, you know, if somebody puts on social media some sort of negative thing about independence, that it automatically links them to one of our current open volunteer <laughs> positions to improve that area? No. That sounds like an algorithm. And we need more IT experts. Because, I, I, you know, like if it can push you towards advertising, it should be able to push you towards volunteer opportunities. Yeah, there you go. Um, because <laughs> they're out there, and if you don't like something, there are a lot of chances to make it better. But yeah. I don't know about the businesses. Uh, the answer I hear from most folks is manufacturing, which would undoubtedly help. Uh, obviously, that brings more jobs, but we've already brought up the idea that we're fighting uh, people to become employed. For some reason, we're, we're, the government has a lot of handouts, and people would prefer to take that instead of go and work and, and make that hard-earned dollar. So, um, Although I feel uh, manufacturing would help a lot, I still think we battle um, the employment rate just because people don't want to be employed. Okay. We've got a lot of questions out here. So um, right there in front actually, of I'm going to try to go to Hoyt. Hoyt had his hand up first. I apologize. So I'm going to try to get to everybody in order if we can, but we've got about 20 more minutes. Uh, yes, I think this is a, a terrific e example. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I, I started doing videos of our independence Way, uh, over 10 years ago, and that video grew to be 16 minutes long. If you haven't seen it, it has a lot more than the four-minute does, but uh, the four-minute uh, goal was supposed to be a three-minute goal. <laughs> but I think that you, with this energy, with this talent, and with this uh, uh, wanting to serve, we have a, an entity in independence that has been sitting idle for a long time, and that's the Booth Theater. If you guys, with your talents, uh, that could be a center for things like this, for video productions of, of, uh, of sporting events, uh, for, for dinner theater, all sorts of things. And if you would like to get, uh, Ned Stickman is uh, heading this up. I'm on the board as well. But I would love for you people to get involved in that. And I think that would be a downtown magnet for all sorts of uh, late night activities and things of that nature. Thank you, Hoyt. All right, we had a few more questions. Uh oh, Bill Douglas. One of the young ladies uh, mentioned more like art shows, but downtown events, which I think are excellent. And, and in a small town of this size, they can have enormously greater economic impact uh, than, than in a big city. And I, where Annie and Gary lived before, we were in Baldwin City. Their little Oktoberfest, a town of less than a third the size of Independence, had 10, 20 times as many food, uh, not just whatever it is, deep fried uh, candies <laughs> and, and uh, uh, quiltings and uh, all kinds of crafts. It's and an arts and crafts show, basically. And this, which is only half, a handful at Diawala. So you'd like to have some more arts and crafts. Right. Now, yeah. Just a comment that is so obvious, many of you may not grasp the enormity of it. I've just finished about 60 years of career in oil and gas exploration. To my knowledge, I'm not insisting dogmatically, this, but to my knowledge, there are only three small towns in the United States that spawned an oil company. Bartleville for both Phillips and City Service, Ponca City for Conoco, and Independence for Sinclair. 
to compare the past of when these were the hub of the enormous worldwide enterprises is ludicrous. It's, it's like when a king's been dethroned or something, and, and the fact that the city is a level of culture and economic activity that it is, when the energy and billions of dollars generated by the Sinclair Oil is gone, is an intellectual denigration. It's amazing that the city is as it is, having been what it was. And to point to that with some longing as if uh, it ought to be like that is really silly. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. We appreciate that. Appreciate that comment. It's kind of one of those ones where they say our heyday is gone. Our heyday is gone. And for those people in New York, if they don't realize it, hay grows again. And it comes back, and it grows again. So guess what? That's what we can do, and that's what we'll continue. I'll try to get to you. I got Blake had his hand up a long time ago. My name is Blake Eskert, and I'm kind of a newcomer, too. I lived 12 different cities before I even crossed the line into Kansas. What brought me to Kansas was it's relatively more progressive and less backward than Oklahoma. And uh, it's kind of like got that Ad Astra mindset. Sorry, anybody who's from Oklahoma. Kind of got that Ad Astra mindset of you get where you want to go through hard work. What brought me to Montgomery County is the uh, better cost of living. It is very, very easy to take care of a family here in Montgomery County. And uh, what brought me to Independence was uh, the housing market. There are a lot of beautiful houses here in Independence. Yeah. And what makes me want to stay here in Independence is the community. It is a really, really wonderful place. And I think that, you know, if we have businesses where there are people working in Independence who don't live in Independence, there are enough beautiful houses for them, I'm sure, on the market right now that we could move them all in this year. Yeah. So I say, why don't we, you know, uh, encourage our realtors to get out there and talk to these businesses and kind of go do it. Bring them here. Absolutely. My name is Blake Eskert, and uh, I started my first business here in town uh, last year. Okay, don't let him out of the room until we get him appointed to some committees. Okay. You got it. You got it. We need that. Can I, I repair computers. Wow. Computer. Blake's an IT guy. You got an IT problem, call Blake. Um, I actually have a couple of questions. Um, I agree, independence is great. I love you here. I grew up here. Um, I went to school, came back, started my business here. Um, but my question is, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, we want to do things in independence. We want this to come to independence. But as someone who's been back here for a couple of years, I'm wondering what a member of the community can do or what is being done to create those opportunities and bring more things in town. Um, I just recently joined YPI, so I'm, I'm maybe not sure what's, what they're doing as an organization yet. I, this is just my second time. But so I'm kind of wondering what the Chamber of Commerce is doing and what YPI is doing and how someone like me could get involved in things like that and volunteer and join commissions and things. So wow. I kind of feel like we should discuss what we can do Fantastic. to do those things. Another potential volunteer. We need to sign <laughs> Absolutely, up Absolutely, yeah. Anybody want to tackle that question? <laughs> um, you're, in, you're in the right place. Um, probably a lot of different people in this room could answer that question. Um, the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce directors at the back of the room um, uh, former mayor is here at the front of the room. Uh, Ousted, who obviously, mayor. Ousted. Ousted, sorry. Uh, deposed, maybe. <laughs> um, and the, the uh, YPI president is here. I mean, we have, we have people in this room who would love to talk to you and get you involved somehow. Um, I am one of the people who probably is a little too involved. I've allowed myself <laughs> to get spread too thin, so uh, my tar participation is kind of waning a little bit. I think that's something you have to be careful of because those of us who are passionate, those of us who just get really excited because of how easy it is to become involved, I, I have tended to overstep my capacity a little bit. 
We do have one committee within the Chamber of Commerce called the Pride Committee. And, man, we're always looking for new ideas on the Pride Committee. We, it's a small little group, but we'd love some new ideas, some new blood in there. And um, we, we accomplished some great things, but uh, we, need more, we need more help. And I'll just add to that. I'm, that's one of the, one of the um, committees I'm a part of, and it's a lot of fun. And it's amazing how quickly some really positive change can happen um, when you get into a group that uh, is as well-connected as that group. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, well, my next question was, there was social media mentioned, and I do agree that that is an excellent place to start, and I really don't think starting an Instagram for independence is a crazy idea. I think there's a lot of great opportunities to share photographs from the area and what's going on. Is there somebody within the chamber who's, or another, maybe another group in town, who is in charge of social media, who is working on that marketing aspect, or is that something that That is a done? great question. Mandy? <laughs> I don't know the answer. I'm very old, so I don't even know what social media is, but. Um, um, hi, I, Rachel, I work at the park, yeah. but um, the, uh, almost every um, city department has uh, Facebook, Instagram. I know the, uh, there's the Get Independence website, which is the chamber. Um, I can't remember if you guys have Instagram or not. I'm sure you do. Um, so tagging those things. I know going through the, the Parks Facebook page, oftentimes, especially on my phone, I only see what, like, what we post. But if I see our visitor posts and all of the things that they have shared with us and their, their weddings, their birthday parties, their, everything that they've done at the park and zoo, um, I was kind of amazed. I, I came across that the other day. So, um, but there are a lot of those things um, you know, if, if you're out and about and you're doing something, you can tag these various entities, and that helps um, um, increase, it's called search engine optimization, but um, when people are searching for independence, that will help more positive things rise to the top. And I'd, I'd also add, depending on what you're looking to put your time into, I know that Kelly Pursuer at the city um, is constantly trying to get somebody to be on some kind of committee or um, whether it's like the, the zoning group, it seems like that's the one that she's always pushing. Um, but there's, there's always something that's needed um, help-wise there that's more municipal-based. Um, but if you're looking for nonprofit opportunities, I definitely encourage you to come to First Friday because I know that a lot of times they have nonprofits that come in um, and have chances to speak. Um, or um, maybe speak to some of your local groups like uh, Rotary and Optimus because they constantly have programs that are coming in that are some of your local nonprofits that need help or if you're they had some ideas to kind of drive you towards whatever your particular passions are um, so that your your time is really where you'd like to spend it I I've been interested in attending first Friday but since I'm running my daycare at the time I'm wondering if there are other I mean I know there's YPI of course but is there a way that we can watch maybe a video of that at some point so I'm, we can see what's going on because I yes. can't attend at that time of day. Yeah, everyone is recorded, and they're always on the cable channel for a few days, and, and then they are always end up on YouTube. You can catch any of the first Fridays we've had on YouTube. I'll throw out two ideas for you as far as if you guys want to get plugged in. Uh, see me afterwards. I've got a list of about 32 organizations in this community uh, that an organization that I, I'm part of helps fundraise for and then donate to. I'll get you their phone numbers. I guarantee any one of them is going to turn you down if you call them and say, hey, do you need any help? Can I help you? Yeah. Whether it's AWOL, <laughs> whether it's got community mission for improved housing, or, you know, home sweet home. We've got a ton of organizations. That's one of the reasons I personally live here is that this community cares, and we try to help each other. And if, if, if anything, we have so many organizations doing things that we're kind of sometimes fighting, you know, amongst ourselves and who's going to get what done. So... Thank you for asking that. And like I said, anybody, I'll stick around. I'll get your phone numbers. I'll get you all the information you need. Like I said, 32 some organizations that I can get your phone numbers for. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Hank? Friends helping friends. <laughs> all right. Well, I think we are ending just about on time. I wish I had. Oh. 
Wait, our last question from our youngest young professional. How come there, there's a, a lot of things to do around the whole wide world? <laughs> that is an excellent question. And someday, you know what? We just all keep trying and trying and trying, and we make the world a better place that way. Little steps all the way through. There's always going to be something to do. <laughs> Guess what? That gives us a reason to go on, a reason to make things better, and an opportunity to improve yourself, not only that, in your community. Sweet. Well said, Gary. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, with that, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Um, let's give a warm round of applause for our panelists, please. Thank you for having the guts and the courage to just come up here, get in front of a bunch of strangers you don't know, some you do, and talk about how you really feel and celebrate independence and how great it is to live here. So thank you all for coming. Like I said, I've got to get back up there so people can start giving me their phone numbers so we can get some volunteer work going. All right? Thank you. Thanks so much.